What's up y'all, Ben Vista the Heartland Maker here. Today we're gonna make all the projects I made in between my main golf club build. First is gonna be this leather golf head club cover. Then we got the beach golf ball and the hickory tee. Fun little side projects that I made and um, we are gonna use all these. We're gonna hit this wood golf club. We're gonna hit, the, hit it off the wood tee and we're gonna see what happens. Stay tuned. While you're staying tuned, the first thing I'm going to make is the golf head club cover. This is the same leather that I used for my handle wrap on the golf club. And my process and my thought process behind making this club head cover was to essentially just make a cylinder. And to start with that, I made the circle. As you saw, I used the contact cement can to make an imprint on the leather. And then I just followed that circle imprint with my X-Acto knife. And that gave me a pretty good result as far as circle cutting goes considering it was freehand. Then once I got the circle cut out, I could then measure the circumference of that circle, and then that circumference would be the length of cylinder sidewalls that I would need. I just used a piece of string, as you see here, wrapped it around the circle, and then I measured how long that string was, transposed it, and that's how I got the length that I needed. As you can see here, the length is about 13 and 5 eighths inches long. So then I just broke out my larger piece of leather and cut to size. This first part that I'm cutting here is the height of the golf head club cover. So I'm just making a straight line perpendicular to um, the top edge for the total height. And then I'm gonna measure over that 13 and 5 eighths inches. But you can see here, I temporarily forgot how to use a ruler. But once I remembered how to use a ruler again, uh, I just measured over, made a mark on the top and bottom, and cut perpendicular once again, and that gave me the length I'm going to need to wrap around that circle to make the cylinder. And here I am just testing to make sure that the cylinder was actually going to work, and once I was satisfied that the length of the cylinder tube matched the cylinder top, I could break out my stitching chisels and get to that. But first, a message from Live Ben. All right, so here's what we got here. This set of chisels that I got here for stitching are two centimeters wide. This piece is almost exactly 36 centimeters long, which is also the circumference of this bad boy. So I should be able to get 13 of these in each and then stitch them together. We'll find out what happens. But before we get to punching holes, we gotta make our stitch line. To do this, I just use a pair of calipers, set it to about an eighth of an inch wide, and then ran the top side of the calipers along the top edge, and then that bottom side of the calipers made that nice clean stitch line. Then it was time to break out the stitching chisels and get to punching holes. Once the holes that were going to be the circumference were punched, I had then had to punch the vertical um, holes to make sure that everything was gonna stay nice and tight once I wrapped it all around. And as always, my faithful dog Coda needed some more attention. Good dog, good dog, three, two, one. Oh, big baby, oh, big baby. What are we doing? Hmm? What are we doing? Why do you need to be on my lap? Hmm? Why do you need to be on my lap? What do you see? You're a good dog. Oh, I'm a good dog. Can I get back to work now? Hmm? Can I? You're a funny dog. Okay. Hi. Good dog. And once again, we came to the compromise of he can stay on my lap as long as I get to keep working. So anyway, I'm just making the stitching holes on the top part of the cylinder that will attach the circumference of the long length of leather to this top part. Once all the holes are punched, it was time to actually start stitching. Now I learned from my last stitching project, which was the dog bed I made for my dog, which you can see he's now off my lap and he's actually on during this part. 
And if you remember, I used way too thick a thread for that project, so I got myself some narrow thread and it made my life a lot easier. To stitch these two parts together, I wanted grain side to grain side, and when I say grain, the top part of the leather, the good looking side of leather is called the grain. Um, I put those two parts together because at the end I was going to flip it inside out, so while it looks backward in the beginning, once you flip it inside out, it looks right. So that was the process, that was my thought process in doing this, and now we get to watch mm, probably at least an hour worth of stitching condensed down into probably a minute or so. I said math worked well that was a lie math is wrong never trust math so as you can see I came up several inches short um, or I was actually too long with the cylinder the circle was several inches short but I just cut off the excess punched some new holes and it all worked out well in the end and once I got the top circle part all stitched up I could then stitch the side shut and then from there we were home free finally got done stitching I could cut off the excess thread but then came the more difficult than expected part of turning this thing inside out. But after some hard yanking and pulling and testing all the my new stitches which did work by the way, and didn't break or let loose or anything. We got to see this thing in its final form and I'm really happy with how it turned out. As with all projects, you immediately have to test it out to make sure it's going to work for its intended use. And luckily for me, it did. And as you can see in the background in the bottom left corner, there's my good little dog laying in his bed and watching me work like he's supposed to, not on my lap. Once one accessory project was done, it was time to move on to the next. This is a, a piece of offcut hickory. This is the same, this is actually the offcut I had from making my handle of my wood golf club. And I just chucked it up on the lathe and I made myself a hickory tee. And I will note that I have used this several times. I think I made this project back in late April or early May. But I have used this tee every time I've gone out golfing and it still hasn't broken and I'm recording this in mid-July so I mean if you want a good tea that stands the test of time make yourself or get someone to make you a good hardwood tea like this hickory one because man it it works and I haven't had any troubles with it and you know I've saved ten dollars from not having to buy bags of teas As you can see, the turning process left a little nub on the top of the tee where the ball would sit, but that's nothing a little sandpaper can't take care of.
And my last accessory project is making the wood golf ball. If you remember in my original golf club build video, I said I wasn't good enough for a club to make a difference anyway. Golf balls, on the other hand, probably do make a difference for me. Um, not normal golf balls that you would buy at a store, but I felt a significant difference between hitting a normal golf ball and a wood golf ball, but this was still just a fun project to do. I'd never turned a sphere of any kind before. I had seen people do it, so I kind of knew the technique of what, it, what to do, but this was my first time doing it, and it wasn't a perfect sphere, but uh, we got it close enough. Technically, when you turn a sphere, you want to use some jam chucks. I don't have jam chucks, so I sort of made my own. Um, I just used an oak dowel that I had and used a Forstner bit to drill in the top of each of them, and I chucked those on the lathe, and then I put the ball in between those and kind of jammed the golf ball in between the two oak dowels. And as you can see, there's some shaky parts where it starts wobbling a little bit, but it all worked out, and we got ourselves really close to a good-looking sphere. When I looked up the diameter of a golf ball, it said it was 1.6 inches and change. And as you can see there, I got real close. After that, I broke out my Dremel and made a whole bunch of divots to mimic a golf ball. And then it was time to hit the golf course. Where we'll throw it over to our golf correspondent, Neb Rissiv. Thanks, Ben Visser. Here are our players getting ready. And welcome back to the Heartland Golf Channel. Here we have our player approaching the first tee with his wood golf club wood golf ball, and as always, his wood golf tee. Now, this is his first shot ever using these things. He's never used them before, so who knows what's going to happen. We'll have to sit tight and watch, but first, he needs to make sure his tee is at the right height. Oh no, his first shot is an errant one. It went straight left, nowhere near the fairway. What a shame. Let's see that in slow motion. Yikes, he cannot be happy with that. Let's see it from a different angle, also in slow motion. If anything, this could be an advertisement for how great hardwood tees are. That thing flipped through the air majestically and is perfectly fine. Uh-oh. After that horrendous tee shot into the last hole, our player finds himself on a par three water hole. Now, he elected to decline to use his wood ball because he'd like to keep it, so he's using a standard water ball that he found on the golf course on a previous trip. Let's see what happens. Oh, and straight into the water. That is why he didn't <laughs> use the wood golf ball. All right, here he is set up for another tee shot. Let's see what happens this time. Oh, much better. Made go. it over the water, and it looks like it's just left of the green. That's actually a halfway decent shot. Here's our player getting ready on a long par four. He sets the wood tee, sets the wood ball on the wood tee, and then takes a few practicings with his wood golf ball. Whoops. Club. Once he's got his practice swings out of the way, he lines up over the ball, ready to strike, like a coiled cobra. And there it is. A good shot right down the left side of the fairway. Nothing to be mad about there. Let's see what that looked like in slow motion from our other camera angle. It looked like there was a gorgeous T-spin. Our player gets lined up. And look at that T go. Incredible. And I've just got word we're going to jump ahead. The player is on to the next hole, and he seems to have found himself in the trees, which is not a new place for him. Right, the goal here is to go these pine trees. So we're just going to give it a little slap shot and see what happens. Perfect. The power of the wood golf club knows no bounds. After he successfully navigated the trees, he gets himself to the next hole, the final hole. Let's see what he does here. As always, he tees up the wood golf ball on the wood tee to hit with his wood golf club. Now, I want you to focus on the sound that the wood golf club makes against the wood ball. It's simply majestic. That sound rivals the crack of the baseball bat. And that shot rivals any he's ever hit in his life. He put that thing in the center of the fairway. 
Let's see it in slow motion from our low camera angle. Even in slow motion, that's an incredible sound. And he scooped that ball off the tee like a, like a ice cream scooper scoops ice cream out of the ice cream bucket. Mmm, delicious stuff. Thanks for watching this week's video. A like would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. What's up, y'all? Editor Ben here, coming at you post-production. Just got done editing the video and I realized I never actually went into detail about how the wood golf club and the accessories actually performed. So we're going to start with the golf club. Um, as I said in that video, I, my set didn't come with a 5 wood. It came with driver, 3 wood, no 5 wood, no 7 wood. So I sort of made a hybrid 5 wood between, it probably would be closer to a 6 wood because I put a steeper angle on the club face. Um, and really it's worked as good as I could have hoped. Um, I swing full power or pretty close to full power with it and club head's still doing great. The shaft is still doing great. No signs of any wear or tear or anything. So couldn't be happier with that. It's sort of, it hasn't replaced a seven iron because you use them in different situations, but it goes about the same distance as my seven iron. So as you saw in the video, I do use it on par threes um, that are anywhere between 160, 170 yards because that's the distance I can get out of that um, five wood that I made. And on those holes, I usually go with an easy seven iron. Um, and really those, those two clubs go about the same distance for me. Um, so that's where it stacks up there. A real five wood would go quite a bit farther. Um, I can hit my three wood about 250 yards. So it's, 80 90 yards off my three wood which is fine but um there is a power reduction in the wooden five wood so really i mean situationally i know when to use it and i'm happy when i do use it um it just took a little bit of time figuring out what situations to do that in and then as far as the wood tee goes as I said in the video still works still use it Honestly, I didn't I didn't expect it to survive. I didn't expect I'd love it, but I can't recommend the thing enough I love hardwood tees. It, they work. They're incredible um, as far as the wood ball goes Unfortunately, that was a casualty of one round of golf um, As you saw in the video, I am NOT I hit it in the tree sometimes it happens to the best of us sometimes a shot goes off to the side and um, it being wooden it being in the trees with pine needles and pine cones and sticks and branches and everything else in between, it was very difficult to find. Um, so difficult that after a reasonable amount of time, I just, I had to give up. I had to keep moving. So unfortunately the wood golf ball is gone. If I wanted to make another one, I could. Um, we'll see if that happens down the road, but um, it was fun while it lasted. As you heard in the video, it made an incredible sound. I loved the sound it made. Um, but yeah, that's the wood golf ball. And then as far as the club head cover, it's still a club head cover. Nothing, the stitches aren't coming loose, anything like that. Um, it looks cool because I got these, what you'd call modern club head covers for my driver and three wood. And you got the cool leather one on there, kind of a little bit of a retro vibe in there with the modern. So um, overall, I couldn't be happier with how these projects turned out. And the golf club, like I said, is still like new and still working great.